Welcome everyone and a happy Mother's Day to all you moms, grandmothers, great-grandmothers. From the bottom of my heart today, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for the sacrifices you've made over this past year. The sacrifices that I haven't seen, that we haven't seen. Those daily things, just the everyday things that you do as mom. The simple things, preparing the meals, maybe it's keeping the house clean, making sure the kids have a proper lunch, maybe it's taking a child to a doctor's appointment. And I could go on um, today even expressing some of the things that I know that my wife, the mother of our three children, does. That it oftentimes you do, it's not seen, it's not spoken about, but they're done. And they're done for the sake of family. And they're done out of a spirit of love. And so today, I join with everyone watching from our homes. We look to you, mom, right now. And friends, I want you to do that. If your mom is sitting there with you in, in the room where you're watching this today, and I simply want you to say those two simple words, thank you. Today, we're gonna, we're gonna take some time of, yes, we're gonna continue looking at Mark's writings and the story of Jesus and how it's action-packed and always on the move. In fact, the story that we're going to look at today is a story that we only find in Mark's writings, but it's a very intriguing one. And there's a couple of things I want us to pull out here. One is Jesus' mother, Mary. What she is, is doing and in this case, at times, you might even think it's not even so much in the background, but she's a little bit more up front. And as we unpack this story together, at least at first on the surface, it may appear, or at least we are given the impression, that Jesus is maybe a little bit crazy. Maybe he's lost his mind. Now, I know, I know, yes, we're in the middle of the National Hockey League playoffs, and there may be some Crazy Leaf fans or some Oiler fans or some Flame fans uh, in your household staying up on late nights to watch overtimes, and, and you're thinking, boy, oh boy, they've, they've surely gone crazy. But as you watch them in, in the avenue of sports, is it just their passion for the game? And I wonder today on this Mother's Day, if there's ever times kids, maybe even adult children, you think, man, my mother's crazy. What is she up to? Why is she doing this? Think on this question. Is it the passion that your mom has that sometimes is not right in front on display is it the passion that she has? Is it that protective nature that she has for you? And maybe at times you think maybe she's a little bit crazy. Could it be that she's just wanting to be there for you and show you how to walk life? Friends, that's what we're going to unpack a little bit uh, in this story of Jesus, as we find, once again, Jesus is challenged. His authority is challenged. But Jesus doesn't back down. And so on this Mother's Day, I want to pause just now. I want to pray. Moms, I want to pray for you. Grandmothers, I, I want to pray uh, for you. And to be honest, uh, as I've walked these last couple of weeks, you know, uh, like you, life gets busy. It goes in circles. Yes, we sometimes have a calendar to try and keep us in order, but just things keep spinning and sometimes things get missed. Does that ever happen? 
Well, confession for you all, that's happened um, to me at points over this last couple weeks, and I'm grateful to my wife for helping keeping me uh, on track and help keeping our children on track. And I know there's times when we just, in the spirit of prayer, what we simply need to do is take a breath. Go ahead, Mom, take that breath right now. You've earned it. And just be still in God's presence, in the quietness of the moment, and realize once again that in all the busyness that's going on around you and your home, God is there. Even when it seems like he's not, that's where I want us to go in this time of prayer together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for the spirit of love that you place in our mothers. A love that many times is a love that we don't see in front of us. We don't experience the tears and the heartache that they bring to you behind a closed door as they come to you asking for guidance to protect their children. Here in these moments of quiet, God, would you protect our mothers? Would you restore them in health, physically, mentally, emotionally? Moms, bring those those thoughts to God just now. And son, daughter, friend, if you're sitting there right now, just put your arm around mom. You don't need to say anything. Just be still. God, thank you for being here. Thank you for walking, for carrying, for holding mom. Today, as we take some time together in our homes to perhaps sing along to the words that we will see on screen or maybe sit reflectively as the words go by, May they stir in us the hope that is in you. A hope that when we cannot see it, when it seems like we cannot grasp it, it is there. Because it's present in our mothers as they care for us. And yes, today, God, for that, we say to you, thank you. Walk with us in this time, we pray. Amen. There's a name that levels mountains Carves out highways through the sea I've seen its power unravel battles Right in front of me There's a faith that stands 
change to come knowing the battles won for you have never failed me yet your promise still 
So here we come to our story today uh, from Mark and uh, kids. I, I just I wanna I wanna ask you a question as you're sitting there with 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 mom today. Can you tell me the difference between good and bad? Do you know the difference? And if you don't know the difference at times between good and bad. Are you able to go to mom and ask? And maybe mom, you're sitting right there right now under your breath thinking, boy, oh boy, I wonder what they're thinking. And I wonder what they're going to 
they're going to say. And maybe, kids, uh, you found yourself at times uh, maybe doing something you knew you weren't supposed to be doing. You knew that it was bad, but you went ahead and did it anyway, and then you felt guilty uh, afterwards. I know I have. I've done that, and I've had to go back to my mom, and I've had to say, you know, I, I Mom, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, in our story today, as often is the case when we read of Jesus, not only in Mark, but also as we've done already this year in Matthew. Now, in the illustration, kids, that I just gave you, you know, I mean, I'm talking about something physical that we do. But here in our story, Jesus is looking at the good and bad deep within us, in our soul, what's deep down inside. In fact, he's challenged so much to the point that he's even accused of being literally insane. Now, as I shared in my opening remarks, there's two things I, I want to draw out here in, in this time together today. One is what Mary, Jesus' mother, was up to in the background, and maybe out front. But even more than that today, friends, I want to point us again, yes, to the fact that Jesus' authority was challenged. We'll look at his response but then he leaves us with a glimpse into this idea that I will simply call spiritual blindness. And to be honest, I don't know that I can fully unpack it here with us today, but I want to leave us with some questions so that you can have this conversation around your table this week and begin to unpack together this idea, this concept of spiritual blindness. So let me pick up the story here. I've got my, my Bible in front of me, and I encourage you to read a, a portion of this story found in Mark 3. But it says here, after Jesus, and we have to maybe, maybe I should back up for a minute just to provide a little bit of context. We know that already from reading to this point in these few short chapters of Mark, Mark He's action, it's busy, things are always on the move. Jesus is always on the go. And it's no different here. Jesus has, has just appointed uh, 12 men to, to come along uh, alongside him uh, in this journey. We're given their names um, and how they're going to walk with him. He's done some healings. He's had several crowds around him. He really hasn't had a time uh, to take a breath. But then we read here at the end of verse 19, he came home and the crowd came together again. So they couldn't even, um, Mark records here, they, they couldn't even get something to eat. And Jesus continues to pour himself into these people. He continues to have compassion for them. So much so that Mark paints a picture here that is Jesus out of his mind? Is he going crazy? Is he not going to take time for himself here to catch his own physical breath? And Mark paints a picture here that it could have been uh, some of his family members, his mother being one of them, basically coming to try and literally drag Jesus away uh, from this crowd so that he can get some nourishment, so that he can get some food, so that he can get some rest. And he just continues on with this. And they're like, you need to stop. You need to catch a breath. And then once again, we have these religious leaders known as the Pharisees place a challenge here. And they're they go on, and like I said, you may have had a chance to read it here. They basically accuse G Jesus of being possessed, of being insane. 
And they're like, no wonder he can do these crazy acts, even deal with, with evil and cast out evil spirits. No wonder he can do this because he is evil himself. That's the accusation here that comes to Jesus. And just stop and think for a moment. If you're Jesus's mother and you're hearing these accusations against your son, are you worried? Perhaps. Are you fearful? Yeah, maybe. And maybe for your son, maybe for his own sane mind, maybe because you're concerned about what these religious leaders might do. So th there's this concern in the background for Jesus. But then we read on, and as we often see, Jesus never backs down. And he looks at these religious leaders and squarely accepts their challenge and pokes it right in the middle and puts their argument to rest. When he says, really? Now think about this, guys. Come on. Can Satan really cast out Satan? Now, as an aside here for just a moment, I want to point out the fact that, again, as Mark records it here, Jesus says Satan. If you back up in this story, the religious leaders use the name of Beelzebub. Now, I'm not going to take time to unpack who Beelzebub was, but if you want to read about that, go back to 1 Kings in the Old Testament. And simply what you'll discover there is that Beelzebub uh, was an evil spirit or an evil an evil God that was, that was worshipped. Jesus, and I picked this up from some of the readings that I did this week. Jesus doesn't focus on that. He addresses this as Satan for who this individual, this spirit truly is. Who this spiritual war, who this battle, this is where Jesus has come to confront. Here we see Jesus unpacking this kingdom that he is really going to bring. It's not a physical one, it's a spiritual one. And Jesus goes on, he's like, look, he's like, he's basically saying, if you think that I'm evil, that I'm Satan, then how can... Satan be defeated against himself. He's like, no, it's got to be someone stronger. And he uses the illustration of, of going into someone's home. If you're going to take that home over, if you're going to take away their belongings, you've got to be physically strong enough to be able to bind them up, to tie them up. Otherwise, you're, you're not, you're not going to win the battle. You're not physically going to win. There's got to be someone stronger. And Jesus is essentially saying here, I am that one. I am stronger than this evil that you speak of, that you think I'm possessed with. I am bigger. I am more powerful than that evil. In fact, I'll go so far, you say Beelzebub, I say Satan, and I am stronger than even him. Now again, picture this in the background. Do you think Mary at this point is saying, yeah, that's right. That's my boy. I, that's my boy. That's my boy. He's got him. He's the son of God. Go get him, Jesus. Cheering him on. Or is she still in this essence of concern for her son? I'm going to come back to that in a few minutes. But let me go back towards the end of this argument here that Jesus is having with the Pharisees. I want to pick this up. When he says, truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. That's some pretty good news coming from the lips of, of Jesus. Again, asserting his authority as God in the flesh, God with us, saying that you can have your sins forgiven. But Jesus doesn't stop there. He goes on to say, But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, 
but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. And Jesus specifically here is addressing the Pharisees and the accusations that they have brought before him. And he's pointing right back at them. And he's saying, look, if you want to go that far and you want to live your life like that, believing that the Spirit of God is evil and is not there to help you, is not there to love, is not there to forgive, then you are in for an eternal shock. And there's not going to be anything anyone can do for you. You see, friends, what Jesus was exposing here, he was exposing their spiritual blindness. Deep within the hearts of these religious leaders, they could not see Jesus for who he truly is. They didn't want to see. They wanted to keep their place of high authority. But Jesus was coming to say, there is no one higher than me. And yes, that is quite a claim. But Jesus was bold enough to say it out loud because he knew who he was as God's son. And so I just want to pause once again. How, and these are questions I, I, want, I want you and your family around your table to, to wrestle with together this week. How do you and I discern the difference? You know, I, I talked with our kids for a moment about, you know, whether, they, whether or not they recognize good or bad. I want to I dig into that a little more if I can. Spiritually speaking, how do you and I discern good from bad that is deep within us? How do we do that? Well, as we've been discovering in Mark and in Matthew, a good place to start is with Jesus right in the middle of that conversation. Think about how Jesus responds. Where is he coming from? How is he displaying God? Start there in that conversation. And let me ask you, and we're going to come back to Mary here as we, as we come back to this idea of what she was wrestling with as Jesus' mom. What, what, what possesses you? What, what, what keeps you going? Is there anything that can stop you? What are you genuinely passionate about in this world? You see, in the beginning of this story, we discover that Jesus was passionate about people, wanting to be there for them, to heal them physically and spiritually. And nothing, nothing was going to stop him. Think about that around your tables this week. What, what are you truly most passionate about? Now, as we wrap up this story from, from Mark, we read on in these next verses that um, it says, Then his mother and his brothers came to him, and standing outside, they, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside, and they, they're, they're asking for you. And they were, they were genuinely concerned for Jesus. Here we see the mother concerned for Jesus. She's recognizing that he's running himself ragged, even to the point of where his, his sanity is even being challenged. So as a mom, she's being genuinely concerned, saying, Jesus, come back to me. I'll take care of you. I'll help you get rest. I'll give you, give you some food. 
And in those moments, we see here Mary and, 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 the, and the brothers, they're, they're, they're thinking about the physical need of Jesus. But what Jesus once again digs into here, friends, is not just the physical, but the spiritual. Listen to Jesus' response. He says, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. You see, in these moments, friends, what, what Mary and, and the brothers, what they didn't see was the spiritual work and the spiritual compassion that Jesus had for all people. And that's genuinely what he wanted them to see. But they were blind to it. Why? Because they were so focused on the physical. All they could see was the busyness of the world around them. Let me ask you. Let me ask me. In this crazy season that we're walking. Can you hear God? Can you hear the voice of Jesus? Or is God silent? And if he is silent right now, is it, and just be honest with yourself, take that spiritual, this is another time for a spiritual health check. Is it because we're too busy with the calendars and rushing from one thing to the next? To hear God say, Chris, I want to do something, and it starts in here. This is where I want to work. Yes, I'm concerned about your physical needs, just like your mom. But I'm also concerned about what's in here. Moms, that's where I want to challenge you. As you continue to raise your children, even into and on in adulthood. Would you take the time, and thank you for taking the time when you do, to be still before God in prayer and bring the soul of your children before him. That pleases the Father. It really does. Would you continue to do that? Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for being that spiritual peace that God has called you to be. And as we've talked about today, in those times when it gets busy and all you can see is the physical and the busyness of the calendar, that's a warning sign to you, Mom. Stop. No, really. Stop. Take a breath. A breath from God. And let him renew your soul. And as he does, go with God because he's already where you are going. Happy Mother's Day.